Hi guys, this is the second part of my repair of the Netgear JFS524 switch. I'm just going to bring you back to where we were with this. So, this is our switch here. So, this is the power board and this is the main board that carries out the switching function. In our previous video, we had found that there was 5 volts getting to here, meaning that the circuit was pretty much good up to this point. So, all of this was fine. However, this board was not coming on, even though the 5 volts was correct up to this point. I also tried plugging out this cable and plugging in my desktop power supply and supplying 5 volts from that and it still didn't come on. Now as I was doing that I noticed that one of the chips here was actually blown so I ordered the replacement from AliExpress and I'm going to show you what, I, what uh, changes I made from there. So this is our blown chip here and when we look more closely at it we can see the number on it is CM3708AG. So when I Google for datasheet on that, we find out that that chip is as follows. It's a 3 amp low noise pulse width modulation step down regulator. So as you will see right here, this can accept a 3 volt or 5 volt fixed input and it can produce an output voltage between V reference and V in, which as it turns out, it says later in the document that that can be anywhere between zero and five volts. So again, the reason for using a chip like this would be to take your five volt input and break it down to a smaller uh, regulated DC voltage of one volt, two volts, whatever. So that's, that's the purpose of it. So I got five of these from AliExpress. They were pretty cheap, uh, just under, I'm not sure what it was, I think it was a fiver. Uh, it obviously took a while to come because it was coming from China. But when I got them, my first step then was to take off this one right here. I removed it with my hot air station, I put it to 400 degrees, uh, put a bit of flux over the chip and then heated it up with my hot air station and picked it off with my tweezers i'll do a video there's plenty of videos online showing how to do this but i'll do another one if there's uh, enough demand um i'm by no means an expert at doing it there there's certainly other people like not rich fix and um soren in the electronics uh, uk channel that would be better than i am at doing it so i took it off i then dropped in my new chip and as you can see right here you just need to watch where the pin at the corner goes because that indicates where pin number one is. It's number one is over here on this so you can see the little circle matches it right there. So to fix it back in place once again I use my heat gun at 400 degrees and after I had soldered it in place I just touched up the legs of the chip with uh, a conical tin soldering iron and then I went over it with my uh, my cheap microscope just to check each pin to make sure that it was making contact. After I did that, I decided to try it out just with my desktop power supply to see if it was doing anything, uh, see if it would actually come on after that. So what I did was, once again, as I did in the first part of this video, I got my desktop power supply, connected 5 volts and 5 volts to here and ground and ground right here. And when I did that, it actually started drawing 300 milliamps somewhere between 300 and 400 and it was just going up and down um so it wasn't doing this before i changed the chip there was literally nothing happening uh, at that point so i thought i'd made some sort of progress but that there may be a secondary fault on the board or just another issue with you know just another chip or something so with my power supply still connected and still drawing 300 to 400 milliamps I touched around the board. Obviously, there's only five volts going into this board, so it's safe enough to touch around the board to see if anything is getting hot, which might be indicative of you know there being a problem with particular components. Um, the professionals do this with a thermal camera, where they just inject voltage and look around it with the camera and see what's heating up. But I just left the power connected and touched around the board, and what I found was that this chip right here was getting extremely hot. And on further inspection, I looked at the model number of that chip and have a guess what the model number was. Yep, same one. 
uh, stepping back and looking at it, it's, you know, it, it is pretty obvious that that grouping of components here is very similar to this grouping of components here. So it was actually the same chip and it was getting extremely hot. So given that I had five of these from AliExpress, I said I might as well swap out that one and see if that made any difference. So using the same method as before with my hot air and with my flux and my tweezers, I replaced that chip also. So having replaced both of these chips then, I then plugged in my DC power supply into the board again to feed in five volts. And having replaced the two of those chips, the uh, switch started working again. So this is my switch, which now has a power light on. And if I plug in my laptop, you'll see now that's also working. So that's it for today. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments to make, positive or negative, please leave them below. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.